So tonight's presentation was supposed to be uh, a good old um, cooperative volunteer and uh, very meaningful presentation. <laughs> but something got in the way of that. And so it's going to be a little bit lighter and um, a little bit less in the demonstration standpoint, unless you all want to take a method and, uh, and start uh, drinking at home and showing us uh, your different drinking methods. So in that in mind, I just did a little research and came up with different traditions from around the world. And then we'll get into some more um, off, more colorful uh, uh, different ones. So as you can see, Canadians, um, they have the uh, Sourdough Saloon where you uh, have the secret club with the sour toe cocktail. Um, yes, it has the actual human toe in the cocktail. And uh, Ukraine, celebrate a wedding by drinking wine from the bride's stolen shoes. Don't let those shoes off the floor. In the Czech, bad luck. If you uh, uh, have bad luck, you're going to have uh, bad sex for seven years. Um, Whoa. Some, some people might feel lucky it's only bad sex for seven years, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully nobody on this uh, call. So whatever you do, maintain intense eye contact eyes, um, with your drinking companion and don't cross arms with any of them while drinking, uh, raising a glass. Good news is it's only the first one. Netherlands, you ordered a Genevieve. Who knows how to pronounce that? It's Brad around. Uh, Dutch liquor in the Netherlands. And everyone performs a strange drinking ritual. Tulip glass filled to the top to consume it. You bend down and drink the glass without tasting it from it. So anyhow, drinking traditions. Uh, so now we're into different things that people have shared. And so Steve shared a um, video of uh, him um, drinking from a yard glass, right, Steve? Is that what it's called? So I'm going to have to. He also has it here well, on the camera for you. Yeah, I have it right here. OK. <laughs> That's a tricky thing. Yeah. Tricky, tricky. Well, Hard part is when you get down to the bottom of that. He yeah. cheated. He didn't finish it. <laughs> that looks like a heavy beer, Steve. Uh, it's a brown ale. It's a THC infused honey brown ale. <laughs> okay. It's quite yeah. delicious. It looks it. <laughs> wow. What's the volume in that? Uh, this is a two and a half pint glass. Two and a half pints. Anyone else have any national traditions or family traditions or anything that they can share? Well, the, the one that we alluded to earlier kind of leads into, sort of leads into my no, you're 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 a little little bit later there. So I'm a little bit later there, yeah. but I was just yeah. gonna I was just gonna talk a little bit about the Hash House Harriers. Okay. Uh, because um, as as um, Jack and others know, the Hash House Harriers are a drinking club with a running problem, um, and there are Hash House Harrier clubs all around the world. Um, in every major city around the world, literally, there are Hash House Harrier running clubs. And you get together and you run, um, follow a trail that's laid by somebody so you don't know where you're going. You try to follow the trail to find the end. There may be tricks in the trail. There will be tricks in the trail to slow the faster runners down. And at the end, if you find the end, there will be beer. And at the end of the run, um, folks stand around and they sing songs and they do what are called down downs, which is basically where you take a mug or in the, in the case of what we saw earlier, a shoe and gets filled with beer and you must drink it down. 
Um, and so um, the, the thing about the shoe is that if you are caught at a hash house Harriers run wearing new shoes to the hash, more than likely at the end of the run, you will be drinking out of that shoe. <laughs> but cool. the good news, is it's one run's worth of sweat and dirt and it's your own shoe. Okay. <laughs> so oh, I feel so much better now. Well, that, that and then there's also a little uh, tradition called uh, tea bagging, which goes along with the shoe drinking, <laughs> which is where they take the sock that you ran in and they pour the beer through the sock into the shoe just to make sure oh. that you get, get the full effect. Yeah. And, and I, I, I must say that um, the, the beers out of the shoe and through the tea bag, um, based on the, the starting beer, it's usually better out of the shoe or the tea bag because they're very cheap. <laughs> they bring very cheap beer and <laughs> it's, it's better. So don't be afraid. It, it's also called Sunday at Guantanamo Bay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, right. cool. So what else you Anyone got else? there, Dennis? So this is uh, my great niece's uh, drinking technique. And um, I had Lauren reach out to her and have her send us her drinking technique. Uh, I don't think it's that uh, unusual, but she was the first person I ever saw do it. And basically it's the only way she drinks almost. Oh, she fooled us in that one. Oops, watch that butt. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's the real one for her. All right. Ryan, you had a story. Right, Ryan, where are you? There yeah. You are. How'd this come about? I must, I, I said something. I don't remember. Uh, at the party. At the, par oh, the party. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Okay. No wonder there's beer involved. Um, yeah, I had a housewarming party and, and uh, at that point knew a lot of people work for Stone. They, they got a keg in and, um, you know, it was a lot of family and friends. So they all, the uh, the older adults left, and us uh, younger adults who were probably too old to be doing this anyway decided let's do some keg stands, and yeah, so pretty much like hey we're like ten years out of college, but hey let's pretend we're still in college type of thing. So anyway, I wake up in the morning, um, I'm cleaning up the house. It wasn't too bad, but I look up for some reason on the ceiling, and I'm like, what the heck happened there? I look up in the ceiling and notice there's black marks on the ceiling. I'm like, what the hell happened there? And then I realized, oh, the keg was right underneath. Those are scuff marks from shoes on the ceiling of my house <laughs> that I had to then get up and, and, and paint over. So that was, uh, so that's when I learned, yeah, put the, put the keg in the garage or out back, not, not inside the house. It might be convenient, but uh, yeah, that's what I ended up with some so yeah, I can, yeah. So Ryan, Ryan, who was the who was the tallest one at that party doing keg stands? Yeah, that, that was me. <laughs> so your shoes. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think the moral to the story is uh, brewing. You know, activities inside a house <laughs> is not going to last very long. <laughs> Right. No, it was one of those. Uh, yeah, you kind of think about it later, like, what? Why did I even have that inside the house? That was just just poor, poor decision there. You know. Yeah. Bur but yeah, I think this is before I got like my kegerator and and <laughs> and really got all that going as well. So it was a little more limited options. I think I had just moved in for like a month only, so still kind of getting set up at the time. Yeah, my uh, feet on the uh, or footprints on the ceiling story is slightly different because it uh, even though they 
involved a lot of drinking. It wasn't from doing handstands, <laughs> but he had just uh, built out his uh, a basement and we were down there dancing and we were running up the wall and feet across the ceiling and around and um, <sighs> with spotters. And uh, so that was only about 37 years ago, but uh, he woke up the next morning and went down and had all these footprints on the ceiling and he couldn't figure out why. And so he asked and said, yeah, it was from running up your wall. You probably have a lot of footprints on your wall too. So, yeah. yeah. So I went to the hazing traditions, which uh, this is going to be the boot from um, Mr. Uh, there we go. It's going to be the boot. Can you hear that? No. Well, I can talk in slow motion along with that, if that helps. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so in college, I played rugby, and rugby has traditions in different clubs one club does a pitcher of beer after your rookie try so i wouldn't even call this hazy i would call it celebrating but when you get your rookie try which is like a touchdown it's a big deal so another club i played for if you got your rookie try with them is they shot the boot and they would go get the biggest rugby cleat the boot off the biggest forward and it's just gnarly it's been ground into the dirt and the mud for that whole time and they would use that right after the game fill it up with beer and then you're shooting the boot so i don't know i mean i this is my work boot that i just recently retired from and you know if you're not spilling a little beer well it happens but um I, I don't have rugby boots anymore because I kind of decided I didn't want to be hurt the way I was always injured after playing rugby. So anyway, you got to see my uh, my work boot. Not quite a combat boot because I was public health service. But I will say that pounding the pitcher was a lot rougher than shooting the boot because when you pound a pitcher a beer, um, you're not keeping it down, unfortunately. And yeah. we also did our stuff in college with Humboldt Brewing so we were we weren't using Bud Light we were using Red Nectar uh, we were using craft brewing for our drinking games oh upscale huh? <laughs> oh yeah okay I, I pounded a picture of Red Nectar for my rookie try I have to say I've never drunk from a boot and don't plan to but has anybody else drunk from a boot or a uh, shoe <laughs> her hands are going up yeah was that nancy putting her hand up <laughs> that's the glass boot <laughs> no okay. no beard lauren when did you do it or what did you do uh cleat cleat anybody else who else nancy who <laughs> nancy i think I think she was just scratching her nose. No, oh, I think she, I think I, I had to do it out of a combat boot. No. Combat boot. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying this just for the benefit of my father. Mine was not beer, but it was part of a rugby tradition. So mm. same as Sean's. Now I have to say I did drink champagne out of a slipper, but if my daughter wasn't on the call, I'd explain it why but uh you know i don't want her to know that i used to hang out with strippers and we would uh, do that type of stuff but uh i would drink but, champagne out of a glass slipper that would sound really good you know that yeah. sounds bougie Cinderella story you know yeah and if a glass boot counts i've done that dozen times at bagby yeah. <laughs> hey uh dennis uh i don't know if you i could share the vessel that i drink beer out of but it's pretty cool is there sure see it now or later uh, go ahead and do it now all right uh, i'm not sure how you switch me on to uh i'm going to uh, let's see if i stop sharing you should be able to ah uh, yes 
Can can you see this in, in the picture? Yes, so you can see it. Oh, Jack. This this is a it's a real glass. It's a real cup, and um, it's a real boozer. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why I'm a member of this club. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure my dad had a mug like that. Is that a milk stout? It, it actually came from my father's uh, property. I just cleared his property out uh, this year uh, and sold it and uh, came across this. So he's had this thing for 40 years. <clears throat> All right. Anyone else want to compete with uh, that? How about, uh, Dennis, are you going to cover uh, shotgunning beers? Uh, they're they're down there, yeah. But we got, oh, okay. we got bearded, bearded Lauren is going to share. Um, I just stopped sharing, uh, Lauren. So you're going to share your um, Mr. President. Lauren, uh, you're muted. I am trying to I'm trying to find my uh, video here. Hang on. I can see. Let's see if it works now. No, I'll 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 do it from my end. Okay. Because I've actually got it up and it's working right now. Oh, is it working? Yeah. Well, hang on just a second. Okay. <clears throat> Dennis, is that the snow you went on uh, over the last couple of weeks? No, that's a couple of years ago. Oh. Um, Mine was like two weeks ago. Okay. That's better. <laughs> yeah, I haven't changed my picture since that's 20, uh, 2019 snow or early 2020 snow. Oh, nice. So, so I set this up a little bit talking about the Hash House Harriers and drinking at the end of runs and things like that. Um, I first saw the, what has been, I have heard called the robot arm at a hash run in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, and there's not a lot of prep on this other than, um, I think one of the things that the robot arm demonstrates is the importance of your elbow when drinking beer. <laughs> if you think about it, or maybe I'll show you why, um, your elbow is quite important. Um, and, and I'm gonna, I, I tried to be as safe as possible when I did this. Um, you'll notice I'm at the beginning, I'm putting on um, safety glasses. Um, so um, here goes, uh, the robot arm is like a, a it's a four inch PVC tube that's um, basically 12 inches long. <laughs> I don't know how you thought walking forward would uh, change the uh, momentum of the beer. <laughs> that's how you drink Asturian cider. That's how you pour it, at least. Yeah, Cedra, the, <laughs> the Cedra ciders. Exactly. It's yeah. just hard to believe that's a German technique because it's not very efficient. Most of it ended up on your shirt. I don't. Yeah, uh, it, it, a lot of it. Well, the, the other thing is that not only did it end up on my shirt, um, I, what I learned is that there are some su suggested, suggested additional safety equipment that you should employ. Um, you should borrow a nose plug from your local synchronized swimming team while you're at it because it goes way up your nose. <laughs> I think you just need a funnel. Just get a funnel to capture it. Uh, that's that's not the robot arm. Come on, man. That's the beer bottle. Oh, in your mouth. You should have a funnel in your mouth to pour into. That's the beer bottle. Come on. Uh, Tell me we're going to cover the beer bong, right? Come on. Beer bong? Who would cover a beer bong? 
<laughs> All right, here we have nice. bearded Sean with his Viking horn. And his Bud Light. Um, yeah. Wow. He didn't Class have a can beer, so. He, I, I didn't have a car at the time, so I found some Bud Light from 2015 <laughs> that my uh, friend gave me when he moved out. Super <laughs> funny. Look at all foam in the uh, in I the bet tube. it was better, better than ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was terrible. I, I dumped the rest of it. No, yeah, that that is uh, the, the hats with the cans is the worst invention ever. Uh, so a friend that I used to watch Game of Thrones with, uh, she got me this, I think, for Christmas last year. And I hadn't actually put it together and used it. But um, when Dennis messaged me, I, I, I pulled it out and looked to see if I could find anything to, to use it with. And, uh, yeah, it all came out foam. I didn't want to move my head too far. Um, I didn't have anyone to do a video with. So I just tried to take a still picture by myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, I immediately took it off and dumped the beer because it was terrible. And that thing I'll probably never use. <laughs> Well, at least you were using bad beer for a bad drinking method. I think that's yeah, appropriate. I would, I would have felt bad wasting beer. I mean, my I didn't have, you know, zoomed out. It was everywhere. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was coming from behind me, too. <laughs> yeah, it does look like it's all coming in foam. Yeah, they're just yeah. filming up. Has Don't anyone ever been to the Duda Parade? I it's know, I know of the Duda Parade in Pasadena. Yeah, it's a spoof on the uh, Rose Rose Parade. But uh, in 1981 uh, was the first time I saw the beer hats, and it was at the um, bar right at the beginning of the Duda Parade. The band that played um, at the bar, uh, all members uh, consumed copious amounts of beer through their beer hats, uh, and it showed by the second and third set of the uh, performance. But they were funny as hell. So, yeah. All right. Well, it'd be kind of hard to run with that thing on your head, you know, do a marathon. You know? Yeah. I didn't move at all. <laughs> so everybody's seen beer bongs, right? Everybody uh, knows what they are. Um, as Andy says, it's so easy for us as home brewers to create our own because we have our funnels and we have our tubing. And anybody that wants to have a beer bong can have one. And there's, uh, you know, the octopus that has eight different hoses and different things. Um, I'm using my company uh, laptop, so I can't do YouTube off of it. Uh, so I don't have any good uh, videos of beer bongs. But um, we do have a uh, Chris Banker story on when gravity meets Darwin. Um, and that has to do with your beer bong story there, Chris. Okay. All right, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Yep. So a story that was a couple years before my time in college, but has lived down through the decades. Uh, so this was probably a year or two before my, uh, my freshman year. Someone in the fraternity house decided to make a three-story beer bong. We had these three-story fraternity houses and so they started the beer buying at the top, uh, at the third floor window and ran it down to the ground level. And it, uh, when they put that first beer and the first person was down there waiting, the beer was hit, hit with so much force that it instantly knocked the person out. It fell face fo first forward onto the ground and knocked their teeth out. <laughs> what's velocity, what's the, dev what's the uh, formula for velocity? Uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. Yeah, like an acceleration. Imagine the speed times of that the, beer. Times the Especially distance. that person survived. Yeah, they, you know, it probably blew off of their mouth, but it was enough to knock them out. That's why I called it Meets Darwin, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it came up with that idea, it had to be... It's That's easy for me to believe is. that the college students uh, that that the frat would decide to do a three-story beer bong. That's easy for me to believe. Hmm. Hard for me to believe that somebody would pass out from beer going down a tube. Uh, it depends on the. Uh, on Chris, right on do you do you talk to this person, or do they really hate you? Have they sent you, uh, you know, bombs uh, since then? I wasn't directly involved in this, but it was uh, just okay. a year or two before I was there. That's what they all say. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And then Chris, you had a couple of uh, keg stands gone wrong stories as well, right? Yes, you want the keg stand gone wrong one? Sure. Okay. So one night we were doing keg stands and uh, someone was ambitiously ready, but the two people holding their legs were even more ambitious. Uh, is everyone familiar with the keg stand where you grab the handles of a half barrel and one or two people hold your feet up while you drink it upside down? Well, if you aren't, now you are. Uh, and so he grabs onto the handles of the kegs, but maybe not as tight as he should have. The people lift his feet up and he didn't have a firm grip on the handles. His hands slipped off and he face planted into the keg and broke some teeth. Yeah. Wow. So the lesson is make sure that you're ready and holding tight on those keg handles before the people start to lift your feet. Is that really yeah. the lesson? <laughs> <laughs> I could think of some better ones. Wear, wear a helmet with face protection. That's yeah. Yeah, grab your hockey helmet. That's that's the <laughs> moral of the story. That All reminds right. me of another one. Oh, okay. mouth, mouth, mouth guards are needed when drinking. Can I tell this. another quick story uh, sure. while we're on the topic? Oh, so one time we were trying to open uh, a bottle from what? Like, uh, this was maybe eight to 10 years ago. We're opening a bottle from 19, 1980s, uh, a sour beer bottle. And the cork was pretty, was tight and disintegrated. And so we're having trouble getting it out. So I've got this CO2 push, cork pusher where you uh, jam this needle uh, through it and push it to push CO2 underneath. And it wasn't coming out. I put a lot of pressure under it. And then when I went to pull the needle out, it came out and exploded in my face. And I had to wash cork shrapnel out of my eyes. And it still wasn't fully, or I think we had to get another difficult cork out that night from decades old. So I put on a motorcycle helmet for the next one. Yeah. And I, oh, I, 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 wish, I wish I would have been prepared because I'm pretty sure I have video of both. Uh, <laughs> if you can dig it up, Ryan. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I don't. He almost lost an eye taking a cork out. Ooh. All right, Ryan. See if you can dig that up during the meeting and play it towards the end. Yeah, let me let me see if I can hunt that down. Yeah. Anyone else have any hilarious um, drinking stories gone wrong? I just want to say that uh, just. As a career lifetime thing, I, I am a drinking story gone wrong. <laughs> you don't have to remind us all. Uh, all right. Forgive the butt staring you in the face. But this is as one of the, as many of you know, you can drink beer defying gravity. And so I first started doing this in uh, 1975 in Miami, Florida. A buddy of mine and I went to a bar and uh, he asked me if I could do it. And I said, I don't know. So took up money and uh, won a couple hundred dollars because nobody believed it could be done. And uh, then in the old days when I did this quite often, I could out chug people who were standing on their feet um, doing it this way. And uh, has anyone else ever done it that way? It's kind of like a keg stand, but you know, obviously a little different. And yeah, so, so this is the real reason why Dennis was selected to present on this topic. <laughs> We didn't want to ruin the story, but you know, you didn't tell the whole thing, Lauren. Uh, this is the real reason. In 1987, New Year's Eve, I went to a, a friend's New Year's Eve party where uh, everybody at midnight was given a bottle of Andre champagne. And uh, I drank mine while standing on my head while a friend held my feet up against the wall. Wow. That, that sounds was, like a lot of bubbles. That, well, <laughs> well, it was also, you know, it was also coming out of my nose at the same time. 
<laughs> but um, that was 87, if anyone can beat that timeline. Was that a full um, 750? Yes, it was. <clears throat> I almost died of um, alcohol poisoning from drinking way too much standing on my head one night at a uh, ski trip in Upper Peninsula, Michigan. But. And I want to I want to point out that that video is evidence that Lauren still brings her dad beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah when, you were asking my sister. It. I was I was recording. My sister was uh, the beer hander. Sorry, but I trained her well. I moved out, so I had to pass it along to someone else. Nicely this done. One really tight, perverted family uh, situation <laughs> going on here. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I have a claim to fame. Can I share a story? Yeah. Right? That's uh, what this is all about. Okay. In, in, the, in the early days of Stone Brewing Company, probably they were in their fourth, uh, fourth or fifth year at San Marcos when they first started up. Uh, Greg Cook uh, was a friend of mine uh, and all of us that were around during that time. He had a big party at his house in the area and he had a pool. And he had a contest where he gave everybody a 12 ounce count, a can of shitty beer, made him jump in the pool and open the beer underwater and drink it underwater. Whoever came up with an empty can first won. And I, out of 30 young, hard drinking people underwater came up first. And you, you know what I won? Nothing. Another can, Another of, can shitty, of that beer? Another can of the shittiest beer. It, it <laughs> never went to one of his parties again. <laughs> Jack, Jack, that shows that you're a true hasher. I would expect you to be the first one coming up with the empty can of beer. I, I did. I, I opened that thing. I squeezed it into my mouth. I inhaled it along with chlorine water. Uh, but, you know, I won another can of shitty beer. So feel really good about it. Are we sure you didn't just dump the beer into the water? I was, I was fair. I was honest. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I really. Okay. We might need a witness statement. Yeah, I'm not sure you can dump the beer and have the can be empty in water because beer's lighter than water, so um, it would not work. I, I gave it my best shot. I really did, and yeah. um, I came up and I got another can of shitty beer. That's all. Yeah. So Steve, can I uh, take this as you're willing to do a um, stand on your head chugging contest at the next in-person beer meeting? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do the Andre's uh, champagne or sparkling <laughs> or whatever, but I'll take I'll, I'll, I'll do the cake stand. Wow. But only one condition. If Andy Gamlin joins me side by side. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> that's, that's peer pressure, right? Yeah. All I right. Think we, we need Lauren Reese there to attend uh, for safety yeah. reasons. For safety, safety reasons. Of course. To hand us the beer for sure. Now, <clears throat> I can still drink while unconscious, but it, you know, I I will need a healthcare professional nearby. <laughs> and so back in the beer bong thing, everybody's probably seen shooting beers. So who cares about those? Is there any other kind of uh, uh, beer methods that you uh, well, Dennis. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just want to bring up the because you were talking about standing on your head doing that. And the the place where I really saw that done, you know, to the greatest extent was I don't know if you guys remember the Fox. The Fox. Uh, he, they, there was this place in Santa Monica, yep. where near uh, where I live, called the Fox Inn. And this guy, you probably eighty four. Yeah, you probably saw him on television because he'd get on his head and he would go like this and the beer was gone upside down Incredible. and they go like that and the beer was gone. And yeah. you go to the uh, this place and it was just a hole in the wall and all these people were like, you'd go into this place and, and there's a piano in the middle and around the whole edge, everyone's sitting like, you know, uh, elbow or shoulder to shoulder and they're serving you beers and stuff like that. And there's someone that comes in and they, uh, they, they're singing like, you know, uh, dirty English songs on, uh, you know, with the piano accompaniment and stuff like that. And then the fox comes in and he gets on his head and goes like this, you know, and, you know, empties the, the beer out. It's, 
it was pretty amazing just to see how how fast that would it, 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 he could down that beer. Wow. Ziggy, Ziggy, Ziggy. Ziggy. Hoy, hoy, hoy. Olympic coverage, right? They, uh, during the Olympic coverage, they showed uh, him doing it. Yeah, I saw him do it live. So in Santa Monica, and it's just something else. That guy was on the Man Show on Comedy Central a bunch of years back, and that was his his big thing where he would take the beers, just like you were saying, play the piano and wham, wham. Like yeah. as fast as it, yeah. if you just inverted the mug, it would be gone that fast. The fun part about going to the place was because it was a, it was like a sing along place. So everyone just kind of has their beers and they're all singing along. It was just, it was just a riot. It was just a lot of fun to go there on an evening uh, and, you know, just sing, sing songs with everyone else drinking beer. Ziggy, 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 hoy, hoy, hoy. Yeah. Yeah. All these songs. So on YouTube, there's this uh, video of this guy um, trying to uh, fill up a big vessel with six, uh, you know, six pack of beer. And he's got the tubes down and he's got his uh, a drill motor hooked up to it to cause a, uh, a flow. And he's down there trying to do it. He never did get it to work, but it looked like it would be a very interesting way to um, do the uh, chugging without having to put the vessel to your mouth. But didn't seem like it would be it seemed like it was cheating so yeah but uh do you, but, do you have a video of that uh, dennis uh, it's on youtube i as i said my uh my computer won't give let me uh um do youtube so i'd have to go on to um okay my phone and do it but uh uh but it's just if you just look up uh largest uh um or biggest um uh, stand on head and uh it comes up as one of the youtubes so but it it was wasn't interesting enough to actually go through the trouble i would need to get the video onto the uh so it was just because it set up it just didn't work he was trying but it didn't work so that's well, the end of my presentation that, so you know brian has something to share based on people. engineers Right. Well, you know, we have engineers and we could get that thing to work. So I think maybe the, the upcoming home brew fest, maybe we could perfect it. Um, give it a and shot. Ryan's going to share his screen now. Ryan, I've uh, unshared so you can do it. OK, let me get this figured out. <sighs> you got to pick, pick which screen you want to and then if say it, share. If it has sound, Ryan, you've got to click the share sound button. Share sound. Oh, yeah. You know, before you share. Okay, let me stop. So you go to share, and then when you s start sharing at the bottom, there should be a thing. Oh, uh, got it. Share yep. Sound. Okay. We want to hear Chris scream. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. Oh, I got to get the chat out of the way. There we go. Oh, wow. Can't okay, you? So, so let's back up. This is how we started. Uh, I'll mute for now, but this is what we're how we're trying to get this out. So this this is a Cantillon bottle that was in a flood supposedly. So we're using two prongs to get it out. That was completely failing. You can see that it was still carbonated. That it's bubbling out. The label's pretty much a mess. We partially get it out. And that was about as far as we can get it. So let me fast forward. Rescued from a submerged shipwreck. <laughs> okay, so let me back up. Sorry yeah. for the scary so, looking. So Chris has this device, and sorry, it's I wasn't feeling. But anyway, this is a device where you put a little like CO two canister, right, Chris? I think it's CO two to yeah. charge it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Here so, we go. Go ahead. Anyway, we're trying to get it to work. Making sure it's still has gas. Or is it possible that there's... So this will be the oldest beer until we open another beer later. <laughs> <laughs> that is so scary looking. The glass. Yeah. Come on. There go. There go. Whoa! Oh, fuck it. Wow. You okay? You okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... You can see, uh, I, I wish I had a better like slow motion um, of it, but. Oh, yeah. 
Yikes. Yeah, there's like a little needle that yeah. fill, fills up the bottle to pull off that little shard. You know, the good part of the story is that you didn't really lose that much beer. We lost no beer. No beer. Yep. No beer was lost. You can see how beat up that no label. No were lost either. Yeah. No eyeballs were lost. Oh, here we no, go. So, oh, beer, right? Right? Yeah. oh, wow, there is a slow motion. I mean, it's not like, I, I wish I had the camera a little higher up. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, you can see what it did. Oh. Yeah. You can it's slow motion is still shoot. fast. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> So anyway, that's uh, that's the footage from that event. So that was so Ryan. Uh, was the beer any good? Yeah, it was still really good. Yeah, it was drinking great. Ryan, you don't have the picture uh, video with the motorcycle helmet, do you? Oh, maybe another one. But yeah, um, we that wasn't the first time we used that device. So yeah, the next one had. Uh, let me see if I can find it. But yeah, he, he put on his motorcycle helmet for the next one. Uh, yeah, we learn learn from that one. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can dig that up. Hold on. I, I think I do. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's good to see you guys are trainable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, being engineers, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. You know, speaking of opening up uh, bottles of uh, overcarbonated stuff. You know, we've all probably had, you know, opportunities where we've uncorked or uncapped a bottle and it just completely gushes out everywhere, right? And, and by the time it, it, it's all over the counter, all over everything, and you may maybe have like six ounces left in the bottle. It's just, I think it's a yeast infection or something. Uh, just, just go judge any sour beer competition <laughs> you'll run across a Jack, I, I had one where the whole <laughs> bottle came that everything came out there was like nothing left in the bottle <laughs> it just kept going like this and then and then finally it's like okay it calmed down and there was nothing left in the bottle <laughs> i mean yeah it's a nice volcano you know experiment thing for your kids you know at school but it's disappointing <laughs> That made me think of another funny story. So, uh, let's see. There was a special release of Growler Fells going on at Stone. It was probably the vanilla smoke porter back in the days when you couldn't get that regularly, when smoke porter was still around. Um, and my Stone Growler, I had filled with a beer, a homebrew that I was bottle conditioning. Uh, so I realized that growler needed to be empty to refill it with this special release beer. And so I get up in the morning, uh, my friend who was staying over and going to that release with me was sleeping on the couch. I go into the kitchen and not thinking about opening a bottle conditioned beer at room temperature, open it to try to transfer it into another growler. And I pop the flip top on that and it just sprays the ceiling in my face and the fridge. You know, basically the whole kitchen is drenched with that beer and there's almost nothing left by the time it's done exploding. Did you open your mouth and get any during the process? No, but it might have even been that same weekend. Now uh, we opened, uh, Lost Abbey had a batch of Framboise de Amoroso, it was batch one or two that was very overcarbonated. And my friend popped the bottle, he saw it starting to gush and stuck in his mouth and then it started spraying out his nose. <laughs> Did you drink it after that? <laughs> it's such a good beer. The bottle, after that, whatever was right. left that didn't spray through his nose. No, the part that went through his nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was all over the kitchen. Oh, okay. Well, it, at least it wasn't just his nose, you know. Uh, you know, could have been other parts. <laughs> well, you just, put, you just put your glass under his nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's a serving technique, not a drinking technique. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's a different meeting. Different it's, meeting. It's a variation of the Randall. Remember Randall's? Oh, yeah. oh gosh. R yeah, Randall. The nasal Randall. Yeah. Nasal Randall's. Yeah, I think that I think the, the footage of the helmet is on the external hard drive somewhere. So I don't think I'll be able to track okay. that down right now. But okay, no problem. 
Yeah. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. We did the same thing, but yeah, cool motorcycle helmet footage. I think Steve's Mac might have one to, to share. I do. I do. I'm holding up a picture. Oops. Oh, it's upside down. I said right yeah. side up here in front there of you the go. screen. And this is what we called in college. This is what we called the Howmobile. And uh, that's me center riding, um, uh, riding the Howl, who's pulling the keg by its tap. And that's Andy pumping the keg to make sure Hal has enough beer going in him to, uh, you know, keep the vehicle running. And this was taken, Andy, I believe 1986, 87. Sounds about right. I think I would say 86, maybe. Yeah, right. So we, uh, a small group of us of, I don't know, I think it was 10 maybe, uh, killed this little pony keg the night before. And um, I think Hal parked his Mustang on someone's lawn nearby. And, uh, but we had to get the keg. We had to go back to the party uh, site the morning after to get the pony keg. This was in Huntington Beach and we were from, you know, hanging in San Diego. So we had to go back to get the pony keg to take back to San Diego to get the proper deposit. But we had a good time posing for this photo as we just finished off the last few terribly warm beers. Well, if I recall, if I recall correctly, the party ended when the host's mom woke up and had to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so this party was a, it was a, the strangest party ever because, you know, people would sort of like, you'd sort of, uh, you drink your beer, you, you, you pass out at the party and then you wake up and you see other people are still partying. So then you start partying again and then someone else goes to sleep and then they wake up and, and, and every time you, uh, you went to sleep, you know, you'd wake up and you'd, you'd look around and you'd, you, you'd laugh at somebody else that had a mustache painted on them and stuff like that. And then you, after you saw two or three people like that, you go to, oh crap. And you went to the, you went into the restroom and you find out that you had a mustache painted on. <laughs> it was one of those parties, but this is the end result of the party right there. We figured out how to make a, a perpetual motion using beer. Right. And how. Yeah. And, uh, and, how. and we weren't Remember so, how. and we weren't so hung over that we couldn't, finish the keg and pose for a photo <laughs> here cheaper than gas yeah cheaper than who, gas. who is who is the uh the head of the horse so to speak who that's how oh yeah how that's how? of course that's how oh of course how is this our buddy how he's a distinguished <laughs> member of the uh uh hyatt management you know corporation and probably doesn't appreciate this photo I probably take it down before anyone's recording it so oh, if I use yeah, this, we're already recording well, so fuck it. Hal's probably right. well, if, he's not gonna run for political name, office, anyways. <laughs> if I use his name, can I get a discount, Steve? Yeah. Uh quite possibly. Uh <laughs> let us know and we'll give it, we'll give you his personal email so you can send a nice blackmail message. I think if you show the photo, you'll get a discount. If you well, if you yeah, that's it. it. Well, <laughs> We'll post the photo for and and a suggested message to go with it uh, right. for free stays at the Hyatts and throughout California. Probably, I think most North America maybe. <laughs> Good blackmail. We we got to do what we got to do these days. All right. All right. Oh, Jesus, we're terrible, aren't we? <laughs> All right. So Dennis. Um, earlier, uh, at, in the beginning of your presentation, you said uh, that different countries did different things. And I was actually uh, in Canada. Uh, Nancy and I went on a cruise and I did the sour toe whiskey taste. I've got, I'm, I am a f official member and I got a certificate and a card and all that. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, where do they, where do the, uh, where do the human toes come from? How well, they... the legend is this contractor bought this old fixer upper and he was tearing, uh, tearing out the floor that was dry rotted and he had found a jar. And in the jar, uh, it was a preservative of some type and the toe was in there. And he took it to the bar and was sitting around, you know, this is what I found at my job site, blah, blah, blah. And I can relate because I find stuff. But 
um, a dare started, and then that's where the tradition came. That's the story I heard. So. Wow. I, am a, I am a member. They, they say, uh, drink it, f drink it fast, drink it slow, but your lips must touch the toe. <laughs> Whoa! Congratulations, Jim. <laughs> One of the highlights of uh, one of the highlights of your life. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't taste anything but the Jameson whiskey or whatever you choose to have with it. So, it's always the same toe, no fresh toes, right? Yeah, I think fresh is gone, but but personally, I think it's just a piece of wood carved like a dehydrated toe. That's that's what I think it was. No off flavors. Don't well, ruin it for there's, us. There's the old uh, worm in the tequila bottle, right? We've all had those stories. Well, no, I know where tequila, that it's called from. mezcal. Dude, that yeah. came from Oaxaca. And I was down in Oaxaca. Nancy and I went down there and we stayed a couple of weeks with a friend. And um, I actually helped uh, survey a 10 acre lot with a guy that uh, distilled um, mezcal down there. And I asked him where that came from. And he said, plainly, it's a tourist attraction, but underneath the agave plant, the, mag the magi plant, when they open it up, there's all these millions of worms that live under there. And one day somebody said, what, are we get what should we do with these? And someone thought, hey, let's just do that. And then start a story where if you, if you drink the worm, you see visions or whatever. And everybody has their own interpretation, but that's really where that came from. They wanted to try to use the worms for uh, profit. Gullible well, gringos. See, yes, it worked for me, and I saw visions. I know that. And I still see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, with that I would like to thank Dennis for putting together yeah. our meeting and main topic this evening. Yay. How about uh, how about cheers to Dennis? Cheers. Everybody else who contributed. Yeah.